Hare Krishna. So Arjuna has asked a question. Oh Krishna, who are the ones who are most perfect? The ones who are worshipping your personal form, who are personalists, devotees, or the ones who are worshipping your impersonal form, who are called as impersonalists. And now, in shloka number 2, Krishna will the, give the answer to this question. So let's see that. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Maya Vesha Mano Yema Nitya Yukta Upasate Shraddhaya Parayo Petas Teme Yukta Tamamataha So here, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Lord Shri Krishna spoke. What is he saying? Maya Avesha Manaha Those who fix their minds on what? My personal form. Emam Nitya Yukta Upasate And who are always engaged Nitya Yukta Upasate in worshipping in worshipping me with Shraddhaya Parayopetas with great and transcendental faith Shraddhaya Teme Yukta Tama Mataha, they are considered, they are considered by me to be the most perfect. So, a very nice shloka. Arjuna's question was direct and Krishna's answer is very much direct. There is no beating around the bush. So, Arjuna asked, who is, who is the most perfect one? The ones who are your devotees or the ones who are impersonalist? And here Krishna says, no question, no doubt about this. The first option is the correct one, that is, the devotees. They are the most perfect, this is what Krishna is saying here. See, before we start, get into the purport, there is one word that is used here in the translation, transcendental faith. So it means faiths are also different types, that's what it means. Now, when one's faith is directed towards a spiritual, towards a spiritual uh, practice, spiritual life, such faith is called as the faith in mode of goodness. Now the faith which is rooted in the fruitive work, such faith is in mode of passion. And the faith which resides in irreligious activities, such a faith is in mode of ignorance. But the faith in the devotional service, that is Bhakti to Lord Sri Krishna, that is considered as the transcendental faith. So it is the topmost, is the, is the greatest one. So in this way, we have these different categories of faith. And here, Krishna is talking about the transcendental faith, the one who has faith in devotional service to Lord Sri Krishna. Here it is given in the purport that in answer to Arjuna's question, Krishna clearly says that he who concentrates upon his personal form and who worships him, with faith and devotion is to be considered most perfect in yoga. So two important points here. First, the one who worships the personal form of the Lord. And how that worship is? That worship is with faith and devotion. So such people are considered to be the most perfect. Now for one who, for one in such Krishna consciousness, there are no material activities because everything is done for Krishna. So this is a very important and a practical point for all of us to implement. So when it comes to us as devotees, as uh, practitioners of Bhakti Yoga, so every single activity in our life, it's all directed towards Krishna. So there is nothing called as material activity. Every single thing. In fact, initially, it might be difficult to understand also that how every single thing can be directed towards Krishna. But then with time, with the practice of devotional service, with every single day of chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. We will get that intelligence, enough intelligence to dovetail each and every activity of ours in service of Krishna. Be it going to office, be it studying for some exam, or be it cooking, be it cleaning, be it buying something for our own self or the house, everything, 
everything can be dovetailed in service of krishna hmm. so here it is said for one in such krishna a pure devotee is constantly engaged so there is no question of any gap anywhere constantly every single moment is engaged in service of krishna sometimes he chants sometimes he hears or reads books about krishna or sometimes he cooks prasadam or goes to the marketplace for purchasing something for krishna or sometimes he washes the temple or dishes whatever he does he does not let a single moment pass without devoting his activities to krishna it's very nice that in devotional service we have got so much of variety so many things are there that we can do now suppose we are chanting and then we say no 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 it's too much of chanting now i'm getting bored i should do something else okay no here shloka day videos they are available <laughs> here various lectures which are available given by pure devotees like shla prabhupad read the books if hearing is also okay tired okay go for reading and then we are like no no sitting at one place chanting reading hearing it's too much you know should do something else okay no problem go to kitchen cook oh that is also after some time it will be difficult no problem go out and clean clean the hall clean the temple early in the morning dress the deity bathe them dress the deities and then get the flowers make the garlands offer the garlands to the lord and invite the devotees and nicely feed them nicely serve them and then all the devotees together can dance so so many things are there that can be done in devotional service and everywhere in every single activity that we were just talking about krishna is the center of each and every activity so the activities will remain the same now outside people they will also sing they will also dance and they will also eat they will also dress themselves they will also go for shopping but there outside the center of their activities is they themselves and when it comes to us as devotees we also do the same activities we also sing we also dance we also eat we also shop so we do everything like what outside people are doing the materialists are doing but then in our life in all our activities krishna is the center so when a person goes for shopping even if he goes for shopping for his own clothes he'll see oh maybe this cloth is looking very nice this can be the backdrop in my temple room mm-hmm. or or this this particular flower which is there which can which can be used to decorate the turban of krishna mm-hmm. or when the person goes to the market then he sees fresh fruits and vegetables and then he thinks oh this is very fresh i should offer it to krishna first oh this flower is so beautiful and when i offer this to the lotus feet of krishna it will become more beautiful krishna will be satisfied so this is the mood in which a devotee sees everything in this world so as we always say that person when he wears the red glasses he sees everything red like when the person wears a red glass that is the glass of sense gratification at that time anywhere he looks at everything he feels oh this is meant for my enjoyment but then if he wears another color of glass i mean the glasses of uh, devotional service anywhere he sees everywhere he just sees only one thing that is this particular thing or this particular person can be engaged in service of krishna this is the thought process this is the difference of thought process externally people might appear the same but what is the difference the difference is in the attitude in the mood the transformation of heart that has taken place So in this way it is said such action is in full samadhi now whenever we hear the word samadhi now many times people are like bewildered now, what is a samadhi because samadhi word people just resonate with one thing sitting at one place with closed eyes and do nothing but then for us as devotees every activity that we are doing sometimes a person will be in full anxiety during the festivals like janmashtami radhashtami a person is running around to do various arrangement and still the person is in samadhi <laughs> why because he is absorbed thinking about krishna and service of krishna so samadhi is an is a very important uh, term which talks about absorbing oneself in thinking about some particular aspect of the lord and here devotees they are always absorbed in thinking about the lord and what he like what his likes are what his dislikes are so we can imagine in such a great level the devotees are hmm. ashtanga yogis jnana yogis and others the only thing that they have is okay we have to get absorbed in brahman hmm. 
and sometimes go off to sleep in between. But devotees, all the time, all the time they think about Krishna and all the time they keep thinking that how can I serve Krishna better? Today I cook this particular dish, tomorrow what should I cook? It should be much better than what I cook today. Today Krishna wore this color, this color dress, tomorrow which, which color should I offer to Krishna? Today this type of garland I made, tomorrow which type of garland should I make? Oh, Krishna wants us to preach the message of Bhagavad Gita. So a devotee keeps thinking, okay, so now we are doing this particular set of videos. Next, which set of videos should we do? <laughs> this time we presented Bhagavad Gita scientifically. Next time when we go to this place, in what way should we present Bhagavad Gita? So in this way, a devotee always engages all his senses, his mind, his intelligence in service of Krishna. And so he is called as a person in full samadhi. And such people who are absorbed in thinking about Krishna, such people who are constantly engaged in service of Krishna, such people who have transcendental faith in Krishna and in his service, such people are liked by Krishna. And here Krishna is saying that those people who worship me in my personal form with complete absorption and with transcendental faith, they are the most perfect. Now Krishna has not spoken even one line about impersonalists. So Arjuna is thinking that uh, no, he should speak something. <laughs> I've asked a question and two options I gave. First one you chose and you spoke, but what about the second one? So basically, the question that has come in the mind of Arjuna is, what is the attainment of an impersonalist who, renouncing work, is able to fully worship the unmanifested? What about them? See Krishna, you said they are perfect, but then they will also be getting something. No, what is that? So this question which Arjuna has in his mind, Krishna is going to answer in the next sloka. So let's see that in the next video. Hare Krishna.